I have the old Swiss cycling tips kit on from the Swiss road tripping video we did about a year and a half ago. That can mean one thing. I am in Switzerland and I am at another product launch with a bunch of pros including Mr Esteban Chavez. So that might give you an idea of what bike brand we are testing and what bike is coming to the shops near you soon. Right, let's delve in. The bike world goes a little bit frenzy and launches all their new products and well I have come to Scott because they are no different. The new addict is well let's say a departure from the old version it is still classed as a lightweight climbing bike but they have carried over quite a few little details from the foil including integrated handlebar. This thing comes from Syncross Scott's in-house brand what you will notice is there is zero cables hanging about, dangling anywhere. Yep, this bike is fully integrated. That's if it's a hydraulic cable, a mechanical cable, or an electronic cable. The other thing, a little thing that I do like about this bike is the cables actually have a foam cover on them in the down tube to stop any unnecessary rattling because that can be, well, let's just say, a little bit frustrating when riding. It's a lightweight frame. Overall, this bike comes in at something like 100 grams lighter than the old model. The bike is only gonna be available in a disc version. You may notice that the frame shape is very much well of the truncated aero version, much like the foil. There's 10 models to choose from of the Odic. This is the big dog and the big bucks. It retails at somewhere about 11 and a half thousand euros. I'll flash the prices up. It'll be in the article as well. This comes with SRAM red axis, uh, your zip wheels and well, uh, Syncross finishing kit, including some new top secret Schwalbe tires, but we're not allowed to talk about them. We'll do a deep dive into all the, uh, the new features, the new tech of this bike, a little bit later when we speak to the engineers. But first, let's get out for a ride and see what it's like. Okay, we're here with Rico and you're going to tell us what's new. This is a whole new system. It is not just a frame and the fork and the bar. It is now all of a sudden everything comes together. The heart of this whole integration thing is our patented eccentric steerer shaft. You've offset the steerer tube by, what is it, three millimeters? Exactly, yes. Explain why you've done that. In the, in the bottom of the, of the bearing, the rotational axis of the steerer is still concentric to the bearing, but on the top um, the, the rotational axis of the steerer basically moves three millimeter out of the rotational axis of the bearing. And so this combination of this three millimeter offset one and a quarter inch steerer in the one and a half inch bearing creates exactly the, the space we need in front of the steerer to guide both or like mechanical shifting, electronic shifting and hydraulic braking into the frame. Right, stupid question. How come that doesn't affect the, the way the bike handles then? because the rotational axis on the bottom is exactly the same as on the bottom bearing. So you don't feel anything because it still rotates around the same axis. And obviously you've worked with Syncross on that because it's not just an integrated bar and stem that you can do that with. You've, you've also done it with a, a stem and a bar, two separate items to integrate it. That's right, yeah? That's exactly true. It is the same for the split cockpit basically, which consists out of a bar and a stem. 
and um, this is totally new on the market. So far this is not existing, so you can can change the stem length without having to re-bleed the brakes basically or without having to open the brakes. Okay, it's lighter obviously than the old one, though the frame's heavier, is that right? It's true, yes, um, the whole part of integration for sure we we had to give some additional weight to that. Also to the um, optimization of the aerodynamic performance we agreed of on giving some additional weight to that and in total the, weight, the frame is in fact 20 gram heavier than the previous one. The fork is actually at the same weight but due to some little details, some little nicely integrated and engineered details, we were still able to shave the, the set uh, weight of combo, um, seat post, frame and fork uh, down by a reduction of weight of 100 gram. This is assuming a 45. It only comes in a, a disc brake version. In the rear you can basically run both options. You can run 140 mil as well as 160 mil. But in the front we, are, we believe that um, you should run a 160 mil rotor in the front. And this is also the reason why we integrated the, the adapter which you actually need uh, in the front. Uh, into the carbon structure, so there is there is no need to have the um, the standard adapter you usually put under a flat mount brake, and so also there we could save weight. Ciao. What do you like about uh, it? What? I don't know where to put the bike if it's a climb bike or a sprint bike because it feels really good for the climb, but also for the flat. Yeah. So it's a sweet bike. I have the opportunity for ride twice, just twice, but yeah. it's enough for understanding it's a really nice bike. It's stiff, yeah. but it's super light as well. It definitely, it feels really, st I was quite surprised how stiff it felt. Yeah, and I like also the thing is super clean, no cables, everything is inside. Yeah. So it's the first one in the market to do that. So that Mind I, you, you don't have to deal with the mechanic side of things, <laughs> or do you when you go home? Uh, yeah, sometimes I do, but this one, the, all the investment they do it and all the investigation is friendly with the mechanics as yeah. well. Now, did you have much input into the development of the bike? We, we have uh, some uh, rides before with the prototypes. During these three years, they do the fabrication of the bike and we test some prototypes before during all this period, of course, and give the feedback to them. and is how that works. Okay. Is there any ever a bit of nervousness that they're going to take something out that you really liked? Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And especially going from a rim brake to the disc brakes. Yeah. Um, you know, the only disc brake bikes I've used are from Scott. Do and you it, like the discs? I do, yeah. Um, for, for, like, for us, personally, as, as professionals, the rim brakes, there's nothing wrong with them. We have a mechanic, he changes the brake pads every day. We have. It, the, the bikes are flawless. Yeah. If they're maintained, they're very similar. You, mm. uh, there's not much difference in performance for me personally. Um, but in the rain, they're... Uh, Chalk and cheese. Yeah, exactly. They're completely different. Yeah. And you really have that consistency all the time. Is there a learning curve? To to, 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 to change to it? Um, no, no. I think we ride the bike so much that you, yeah. you, you adjust fast. What about a learning curve to knowing the characteristics of the bike, the new bike? Yeah, it's going to take some time. I've only yeah. used it once or twice already now, um, and my first impressions are great. Uh, it's very stiff when, you, when you're out the seat, which is one of the first things that I noticed. But for sure, it's going to take some time to, 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 to adjust. But now, yeah, we have, we have the rest of the year to get used to it. Yeah, because obviously one thing that it's been designed around is uh, wider, deeper tyres. 28, it comes stocked with. Uh, you guys are on Pirelli, right? Correct. Will you be riding the 28, do you know? Um, for now, I think the tubulars that we have are 25s, and they're, right. they're, they're, they're great. They're, I believe they're already designing the, new, the bigger ones already. Uh, I'd, you'd have to harass them. Yeah, yeah, somebody else, because I'm not sure. Uh, I think the biggest I've used is, is 30s. Um, yeah. and it, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't notice a big difference from the 25s to the 30s. When did you use the 30s? Uh, just testing the, right. the Pirellis and stuff like this and just uh, the differences there but um, th I think at the minute with the bikes how they are now the, the sweet spot is around the 25, 26 there so. When do you get to roll this bike out in competition then? It depends what I'm doing of course um, if I go to the Tour de France now um, I need to make sure I'm fully recovered uh, from the Giro 
I'm um, still super tired. It's only mm. been three days, like we were yeah. saying, talking about before. So, um, take some time now to recover, both physically and, uh, and mentally. Um, but for sure, the next race that I do will be will be on the new addict. Addict. Mm. addict. Okay, quick roundup of the Scott Addict. Well, it's hard to find fault with a bike that sort of sits at eleven and a half grand technically, because it should be good. A bike should be really good at this point. We have had enough uh, technical development, enough input from pro teams to get the bike right and it rides supremely well i really enjoyed the ride on the limited miles that i did do on it i'd love to get out on it for a lot longer for maybe five hour ride somewhere down the road hopefully someone here at ct will get their grubby mitts on and be able to do a long-term test until then it is hard to find fault with the bike the integration is very tidy it seems uh pre simple to set up as well and I love the fact that you can use just a normal bar and stem admittedly their own Syncross branded bar and stem but that's a, a feature that you're not finding on a lot of other fully integrated bikes and it is very welcome I would say it's interesting that they've stuck 28 millimeter tires on this considering it's meant to be a lightweight sort of all-round climbing bike I suppose the all-round bits where the 28 comes into play then really. For my full analysis of this bike, my full review, please check the link below, it'll take you to the article. Um, let us know what you think of this bike in the comments below. Give us a subscribe, give us a like, and until next time, thank you for watching and enjoy your riding.